Hey everyone, Anarch here. This is another installment of Anarch Abridged, which is to say, um, this is not one of my video essays, which I go recommend you watch if that's what you're interested in. Um, this is just the kind of video where I sit down and talk to the camera and uh, I try to make these pretty casual. Um, I try not to get, you know, too caught up in the weeds, although as anybody knows, I am pretty long winded. And uh, um, appropriately, the uh, topic of this is that, you know, I created a reading list, a recommended reading list, and the reading list got pretty long. Uh, this one is, uh, has been uh, recommended or, or requested by numerous people. In fact, uh, this, would, this was requested even before I started doing Anarch Abridged videos. But as soon as I started doing these, people were, were constantly asking for uh, a, a recommended reading list. So this, this is a, sort of an appropriate format for that. And uh, as I said, the reading list ended up going pretty long. So with that in mind, expect this Anarch Abridged series to be probably multi-parts, which, you know, appropriate for me, right? Can't even keep it in one part. So uh, what I've done is uh, this is the first time that I've ever actually created a, uh, a, a script to look at, or rather, you know, uh, having some sort of guide beforehand. Usually I just sit down and I just talk to the camera. So this is the first time that I've had anything to like sort of guide me through this process, through the discussion, uh, which is to say the reading list. So uh, one thing I want to say is, you know, I've kind of split these each up into sections. Uh, these sections are not like exhaustive, obviously. Um, they're kind of just like a way for me to format the different types of theory and different types of pieces that I want to talk about here, uh, you know. Uh, the first of these is like general anarchist materials is what I've called it. That's what you'll see it's called in the reading list, uh, uh, which by the way, I will put this reading list down in the description to this video. So if you are interested in this reading list, you want to use it um, and you don't just want to use this video as a guide, then um, it will be there for you. And I also want to try to locate, you know, PDFs and everything for all of the, all of the, um, uh, the pieces that are are uh, described here in this reading list. So uh, if that hasn't happened by the time this video is uploaded, just recognize that that is a work in progress. That's something I plan to do. Um, this first category, general anarchist materials, just understand that, you know, what I'm basically getting across here is these are the materials where if you're just trying to get sort of a foundation in anarchism writ large. Uh, these are materials that are built for that. Um, some of them are introductory and some of them are pretty sophisticated works that are somewhat advanced. Um, I've tried to sort of like organize each of these sections in so far as that the introductory stuff goes towards the beginning of each of the sections and then it gets more advanced as it goes. But that's also not like a, you know, a hard and fast rule. It's just kind of like a general trend. Um, but yeah, like there are going to be some material, excuse me, some materials in the other sections here that will also serve as great introductions to anarchism or, or great advanced materials to understand anarchism. And I will note those as we go, um, because I think some of those really deserve to be seen that way and, and they're currently not. Uh, but like diving right in here, the first one on the list is this essay called Life Without Laws. Uh, written by a little collective called Strangers in a Tangled Wilderness. So, you know, um, it, it should be said, you know, I would have like gripes and disagreements with any of the pieces that, that are recommended here. Um, I think that's like, you know, only natural uh, for, for anarchists that, you know, nothing is a holy text, right? So, you know, I have small disagreements with things that are said in here, but, uh, I think generally I found that this is one of the best modern primers that has been written. Uh, and, uh, in fact, at a scissor tail anarchist organization, which is, uh, the anarchist organization I'm part of here in Tulsa, we actually table this, this, uh, this essay as a zine. And I highly recommend that, uh, if y'all are doing the same, that you create a zine version of it, print off zine versions of it and distribute it. Um, it has, it's, it's written in pretty plain, pretty plain language. So people should generally be able to understand what it's saying. And uh, it's written with that intention in mind. 
Uh, and it covers all kinds of different things. You know, it covers like how do anarchists make decisions? How would they deal with problems that, you know, people very commonly refer to when they are first introduced to the topic? So, you know, it's, 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 um, it's built to answer a bunch of those sort of like skeptical questions that people ask right off the bat. And it also gives a pretty good understanding in a general sense of a bunch of the terms that anarchists use. You know, it talks about consensus, it talks about mutual aid, it talks about direct action action, um, these sorts of things. So, you know, it serves it really well as a primer of that sort. Um, and appropriately, the next one in the list uh, is uh, Malatesta's An Anarchist Program, which if any of you are familiar with Zoe Baker, um, who is wonderful, shout out to Zoe Baker, go watch her channel. Um, you might know her as Anarchopac. Uh, she recommends an anarchist program quite a lot. In fact, you can go find her doing a really great podcast with Seriously Wrong, which is just all about an anarchist program. Um, an anarchist program, as I understand it, was not only written by Malatesta, but was written primarily by Malatesta as um, a platform for a anarchist organization uh, back during the time it was being written. Um, and an anarchist program is is actually yes a very is an excellent introduction to anarchism. Uh, it it contains a few things which are products of its time. Um, for example, you'll find that uh, uh, it, it regards it sort of like um, I would say takes the wrong line on immigration and it uh, uh, takes the wrong line on sex work, for example. But in a general sense, I think you'll find that it is an excellent introduction to anarchism, and it is especially good for understanding how anarchism would have been pitched during that era of time. Um, sort of like, you know, is a continuation of the, the um, rhetoric of the late 1800s and the early 1900s, and will help you probably ground yourself really well within a bunch of other anarchist texts. So it is, um, it is a great piece to introducing you to reading sort of like historical theoretical literature. Um, next is Are We Good Enough by Kropotkin. Um, Are We Good Enough is, a precise, is, is essentially trying to answer precisely the question that is in the title there. Uh, as probably anybody is familiar with who has had this debate with, with just the, the average person, uh, the question of, you know, are humans good enough to live in an anarchist or, a, you know, uh, a horizontal society more broadly, are humans good enough to do that? Uh, that question is actually so common that it's the reason why I wrote the, the piece Human Nature, like as like one of the first videos on the channel. It's because I had met so many people and even well-intentioned people, people who really did want, you know, wanted to believe in a better society, who just believed that humans were not good enough. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, Kropotkin is attempting to answer that. As I understand, it, I think this piece was written in like the 1870s or something like that. So like, that's how long this question has been a fundamental question. You know, this is not a modern uh, 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 rhetorical response. You know, this is something that a lot of people asked for a very long time. Um, and Kropotkin is answering it in a very, in a very um, concise way. You know, he's sort of um, talking about the history of progress and how people have always said that about, about, you know, possible human advancements, that they always have this conception that humans aren't good enough for progress, essentially. They're always trying to blame it on some fundamental feature of humans rather than trying to understand how human societies change. So Kropotkin's answering that here, and it's very eloquent. It's quite beautiful. It has lots of great quotes in it. Um, I recommend it for people that think humans are good enough and for those who do not, uh, because it, it is very well argued. Um, yeah, and I guess I should say, you know, I have not included any of my own pieces on this list, but I'll probably kind of mention if I've written pieces that are similar to these as we proceed. Uh, the next one is At the Cafe by Malatesta. So I really like this one because what Malatesta is trying to do is he's, he's not writing like a, a really, sh like it's not like super short, it's relatively short, but what he's trying to do is write a piece that he thinks is going to be well understood by, by the average person, 
which is not just talking theory. So what he's done instead is he's created a series of these sorts of like interactions. It's almost like he's writing fiction, but they're like fiction conversations where people are um, uh, addressing fundamental issues and questions that people have about anarchism. And so it's kind of like trying to use the, the conversational style uh, uh, that sort of like method and like inspection of discourse in order to talk about anarchist issues. So it is actually like a really great introduction. It's a fantastic way. If somebody's like interested enough that they might read a piece just a tiny bit longer than an essay, uh, this would be a great one to introduce people to anarchism with. And I think it would really provoke a lot of thought as well. So, uh, and, and Malatesta was actually a, quite a concise and uh, easy to read author. So uh, I think this is a great one to recommend to people and uh, might even be interesting to those of you who already have a little bit of an insight. Uh, the next one I have on the list is uh, Our Revolution by Carlo Caffiero. Um, you know, Cafiero doesn't doesn't get a lot of doesn't get the credit he deserves. He was a very early anarchist. In fact, um, Cafiero was so early in anarchism that he was he could be considered like one of the early adopters. And uh, this piece, Our Revolution, was sort of Cafiero laying out his conception of anarchism and anarchy more broadly um, in the, at this very early date. Um, but one of the things, the reason I included this, um, even though it has a lot of great quotes, there's a, that's one reason why I should include it. Uh, but it's actually because um, it is sort of not the literal beginning, but one of the earliest insurrectionary anarchist texts. And what's interesting about that is not that it is just insurrectionary anarchism. There's lots of insurrectionary anarchism, and I have not in really included insurrectionary texts here. Um, it is instead that Insurrectionary anarchism in the modern day is usually very individualist, but Carlo Caffiero was a in, was a um, a social anarchist who was insurrectionary. So a, an, an insurrectionary social anarchist, you might say, and uh, I find it very interesting. He was an anarcho-communist, but had an insurrectionary conception, and uh, I really actually like this piece. There's a lot of great quotes in it, and uh, uh, Cafiero was was a very good writer. In fact, you'll see, we'll, he'll be featured towards the end of this list, which probably will not be in this video. It might be in a later later um, video uh, as I go through this reading list. The next one is uh, Anarchy by Malatesta. This one is just. It's a, it's, it's a classic text. You know, Anarchy by Malatesta is probably just one of the best texts about anarchism that has ever been written. Um, it, is, it is relatively concise, but it also like goes through a bunch of like very complex topics. Um, it covers just a wide range of different things. And it, uh, Malatesta has this very sort of um, plain language style, but it also has a lot of really kind of like beautiful prose within it. Um, it's very quotable. It's easy to read, yet quite beautiful. And um, I think that it, it, it stands as one of the best, like, it's beyond an introduction. It's beyond a primer. We're now moving into something that I would say is kind of like a mid-level advanced material, right? Um, anarchy is, you could probably, if it were your first text, I think you could t totally understand it, but I don't know if you would appreciate all of its nuance and all of the details and all the arguments it's making if you had not already kind of started to build a little bit of a foundation, but it is actually still a really great text for building a foundation. Um, you know, I, I think that it's, it's something you could give to people as an intro text if you wanted to. It's, it's relatively short. You know, Malatesta didn't write these big, long tomes. Um, uh, but, you know, it's, it's a little more advanced. It, it addresses more complicated arguments. It, it looks at things from a more complex perspective. Um, it, is, it is excellent. It is excellent. Highly recommended. Anarchy by Malatesta. Um, the next is uh, The ABCs of Anarchism by Berkman. So this is a text which was meant to be sort of kind of like that same level as Anarchy by Malatesta, except with the conception in mind that it was going to like lead you by the hand from introduction to that sort of mid-level. And, uh, 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 you know, Berkman was, was very consciously endeavoring to create a text that would fulfill this purpose. Um, as I understand it, uh, this was being written... The, the, the movement sort of recognized that a text of that sort was needed. And then um, uh, uh, 
like Berkman wrote ABCs of 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 commun of anarchism, and uh, uh, the next one in the list, anarcho syndicalism, was written by Rudolf Rocker, um, either very close to being around the same time or shortly after. Um, so the ABCs of anarchism sort of is a text that will have some introductory material, uh, as, it, as, you, as the name suggests, the ABCs of anarchism, but it does move into slightly more, more complicated topics. It definitely addresses a, a sort of wider array of things than you might expect given its title. Um, and, uh, you know, I would, I would, I would say that's another uh, great tr text to sort of get a broad coverage of anarchism. And a lot of people recommend it for that reason. Um, so yeah, uh, the ABCs of anarchism. So it's, it, I think it's been called a few things at this point, but, uh, now we're getting a little more modern, uh, which is to say the early 1900s, uh, around the, the, you know, this would have been around the time of the Spanish civil war. So, uh, now, uh, the next one on the list is anarcho syndicalism theory and practice by, uh, Rudolf Rocker. And anybody who knows me or anybody who pays like really close attention to my work will know that I am a huge fan of Rudolf Rocker. Rudolf Rocker was um, one of my my biggest influences. Uh, in fact, uh, a book that comes just a little bit later in this list, Nationalism and Culture, was one of the most most important books I ever read. I think it was the reason why I will probably be an anarchist for life. Uh, I'll go on to that in a little while later. But Rudolf Rocker is a his prose is gorgeous. He is a he is a wonderful writer. He has a strong analytical mind. He has an extremely good grasp of history. And um, this piece, uh, as the title might suggest, is really about anarcho syndicalism more than it just is about anarchism writ large. And, you know, for that reason, you might think that it's not a great introduction or a great sort of like broad overview of anarchism, but you'll be surprised. It's actually it's actually does both. Uh, in fact, I think that the first section of anarcho syndicalism theory and practice actually is one of the best primers on anarchism I've ever read, and the one that perhaps I agree with more than any other primer that I've ever read. Um, I've actually thought about maybe we should just like yank out that first little section where he explains what anarchism is and table that as a zine because it's that good. It's fantastic. Um, and then he goes on to talk about the history and implementation of anarcho-syndicalism, which is, um, for anybody that is familiar with the history of anarchism, will know that this is, it is one of the most important and one of the most successful strains of anarchism that ever existed. Um, Anarcho-syndicalism, I suppose briefly, is to say anarcho-syndicalism is based around the creation. It's a sort of like revolutionary trade unionism, but it's not only um, constrained to that. It kind of also breaches into revolutionary, you know, um, uh, uh, industrial unionism. And uh, it sort of sort of saw its culmination in the CNT FAI in, in the Spanish Civil War. Um, now there are, you know, a bevy of uh, criticisms of anarcho-syndicalism, but uh, this text remains one of the masterworks of anarchism. And uh, uh, in the same way that Berkman was writing ABCs of, of anarchism uh, for the purpose of creating this sort of material that would offer an introduction and then a sort of mid-level understanding of anarchism within the time, within around the time of the Spanish Civil War, um, uh, Rocker was writing this text for that purpose, and uh, so it serves for that it serves that purpose wonderfully well. Uh, Rocker is a little more wordy. He writes at a little less plain language level, um, but I think you'll find that that, that beginning is, is it would be especially informative for people who are trying to become informed on anarchism. Uh, uh, so now these last two in this section, uh, these are pieces which are a little more specific and I would say are very modern. Uh, the first of these is um, Social Anarchism and Organization by Farge. Um, that's F-A-R-J. And uh, I, I believe that's uh, Federation Anarchista Rio de Janeiro. Um, you can hear how wide I am in just trying to say that. But uh, it is essentially a compilation of essays by the, um, the Federation of Anarchists in Rio de Janeiro, uh, who created this concept that you may have heard me talk about before, especially if you watch that other um, Anarcha Bridge uh, called Especifismo. 
and Especismo is very modern. Uh, it was developed in uh, Uruguay and Brazil and um, uh, uh, some of the surrounding areas, and it was f uh, it was formed during the um, uh, uh, before and during the the rise of Brazilian fascism and the fascist control of the Brazilian state. So it uh, existed during suppression and. Uh, the, it, this kind of like gives some purpose to why I included um, uh, Cafiero's Our Revolution because, you know, F-A-R-J, uh, a specifismo uh, uh, more broadly, is a sort of like modern uh, insurrectionary social anarchism. So it definitely still contains some of those insurrectionary trends. And uh, I think that it, it serves to help us understand how to combat, you know, hierarchical power in the modern era. Uh, it is more intersectional than uh, anarchism that came before it, or, you know, that's a broader topic, but... Um, it, uh, contains a lot of very useful advancements in anarchist theory. Uh, they talk a lot about how organ, what good organization looks like. Um, it, uh, it, it's interesting because it contains a series of essays, some of which are a little more, I wouldn't say introductory, but sort of like these broad overviews of the anarchist analysis. So they're kind of theory overviews and, but it also like gets really into the nitty gritty. You know, like for some people, uh, uh, their criticism will be that, you know, it's uh, theory is just too sort of like, you know, out in the out in the ether. You know, it's a it's like a, a highfalutin, you know, head in the clouds. Well, you know, what you'll find is that Farge really likes to write towards organizational theory, right, really towards praxis. And that's because they were forged in the fires of a suppressive fascist state. So they definitely have a heavy emphasis on strong organizational principles and also understanding why those organizational principles are good principles. So there's a lot of strong argumentation about why we should be organized, what the purpose of strong organization is. Uh, I, I consider this to be some of the most pertinent and modern theory that, that has been written. And uh, I recommend to anyone who is looking for advanced materials on anarchism to read this piece. I think this is one of the most important pieces that I've ever read. Um, it, it, I should say it wasn't as it, it wasn't important in so far as that it, you know, reformed my view of everything. It was important in so far as like, I think it's stating a lot of the precepts that I think we have to really deeply take into consideration in order to struggle properly in the modern era. So when I read it, it's one of these things that was almost cathartic because of how often I just agreed so strongly with it and how it was saying things, the criticisms that I had had and concerns that I had had with other strains of anarchism. I think that it is um, uh, sort of a clarion call and I highly, highly recommend it, especially to those of you who are watching who already have a kind of decent grasp of anarchism and are looking for something that is more advanced. Um, the very last one, and this is this is why I said I kind of loosely put them in the in a in a in an order of introductory to advanced, is an introduction to the concept of especifismo. So uh, you know, I created my video on especifismo, and Saint Andrew created his video on especifismo. But there's sort of this uh, uh, very well known piece that was created by uh, Black Rose Rosa Negra, which is an especifist federation here in the United States, which is just an introduction to what especifismo is. And its full title is Especifismo, the Anarchist Praxis of Building Popular Movements and Revolutionary Organization. Um, you might find it by BRRN is the, is the, you know, Black Rose Rosa Negra. That's what they often go for, go by as BRRN. Um, you'll find it on their website. So um, this is sort of an introduction to what a specifismo is. It lays out its basic principles. It lays out why its organizational principles are important, um, uh, how those have been arrived upon to some degree, and um, it explains sort of like what they are. It gives you an, it gives you at least a beginning understanding of this concept of a specifismo. So um, I think that if that's something that interests you, if you want to learn about that, um, this is a great piece. And uh, also, if you want to learn about it, um, once again, I kind of like briefly said, you know, I made an anarch abridged about about it. Um, and uh, St. Andrew has also made a short video about a specifismo. So, uh, you know, there are lots of resources out there. I highly recommend reading about it. You know, I look at the clock. It looks like we're about 25 minutes in, but uh, I'm just going to go 
uh, uh, through a little bit further. The next section, next section is um, is what I've just put broadly as history. <laughs> this section uh, ended up growing pretty large, but that's because you know anarchists have done a lot of history. They've read, they've they've written a lot of history. Um, several very important scholars of anarchism have been historians. Rudolf Rocker was classically trained as a historian, for example. Um, so too is anthropology, archaeology, topics like this are very big topics in anarchism. So what you're going to find is there's just a lot of books that have been written on history, modern books writing about anarchist history, anarchists writing about human history, and so on. So I've sort of uh, got this section, which I'm just calling history. Um, and there is all kinds of texts in here. Um, I, I, I will definitely not be able to get done with the section before the end of this video, but uh, uh, expect the next video to start with these. So the first in the list, um, this one is not by introduc introductory level, by the way, because they're kind of, you know, most of these books are relatively dense. Um, the first in the list is Seeing Like a State by James C. Scott. So this book, Seeing Like a State, uh, for those who have been paying attention to my videos for a while, um, this video, or rather, uh, this book is, is a very important book. Um, I've, I've cited it numerous times, and what it, what, it, um, what it really does is it sort of lays out the history of the state and how the state has interacted with a variety of societies. It doesn't, it, it's not giving us like a primordial description of where the state came from. Uh, that, uh, James C. Scott has written another book called Against the Grain. No, this book is more about um, how the state reduces and simplifies the societies that it, that it stands over. Um, so James C. Scott is talking to us about this concept he calls simplification. He also ta talks to us about a concept he calls legibility, which is that, you know, the societies, cultures, peoples, they need to be able to be understood by centralized power systems. And centralized power systems will therefore have a tendency to try to simplify those cultures and peoples and, and societies and so on in order to make them able to be understood by those power structures, which is damaging and is antithetical to human human flourishing and is also antithetical to things like ecological uh, development and, and environmental sustainability. And he goes into all these kinds of examples. So in this, in seeing like state is just essentially a, is a book of examples of how the state destroys complex things by trying to simplify them, but because that's necessary to its very nature. And I have, um, you might say, built on this foundation and uh, built something much more complex than what Scott is describing here, insofar as that what I, I argue is just, that's not just true of the state, that's true of all hierarchical power structures, that they sort of serve as a bottleneck on the amount of information which can be conveyed to the decision makers, and that that is an inherently damaging thing, that that, that is not, that doesn't, we can't build complex societies with hierarchical structures, that hierarchical structures simplify complexity, making them less complex. So if you want to know, hear more about that, uh, I talk about it in part four of The State is Counter-Revolutionary, and I talk about it in part one of A Modern Anarchism. Uh, but anyway, uh, on the same topic, we've got The State, Its Historic Role by Kropotkin. So this book is, I think, probably the most indispensable book that was uh, for in anarchism written on the state. Uh, with the perhaps the exception of Nationalism and Culture by Rocker, which I might not get to in this video, but um, we'll talk about soon. Uh, the state, its historic role, was Kropotkin trying to lay out, like, where did the state come from? Uh, how and why does it function the way it does? How does it interact with the society that it exists within? Um, uh, these sorts of questions. So he's answering all kinds of things like this. He's talking about the history of this, the concept of the state, the different conceptions and, and um, uh, uh, philosophical and theoretical inspections of the state which have existed. And he is um, inspecting all of these. So it is sort of masterwork on the state and um, uh, uh, the history of the state. 
So um, that is where we're going to have to call it for today. Uh, you know, the whole reading list will be available in the description. So you can see what I'm going to be talking about in these coming Anarch Abridged, abridged videos. Um, you know, don't worry if you want the reading list, it's available now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I just want to note, uh, if you liked this video, subscribe to the channel. Um, also maybe, you know, like the video. Uh, if you, if you have any idea for further Anarch abridged videos, you know, I'll get around to them after this, this little series of abridged videos are done, but go comment them below. And lastly, if you want to help me devote more time to the channel and not have to work odd jobs on the side, um, and you know, my patrons on my Patreon make an enormous difference in my life. Every time I see a new patron come in, like it really fills me with joy. Like I'm, I'm so happy to see that I get, I'm getting closer and closer to be able to devote my time completely to the channel. So, um, yeah, you make a huge difference in my life when you become a patron. Um, and that link is in the description, but, uh, it was good talking with y'all and, uh, I'll see you next Friday.